My pleasure, thanks. I'm Larry Spencer, and I'm part of the sort of non-college uh, committee that's looking at the Bonner 50th, and we're doing a series of videos. And today, if you could say who you are when you came here. And right, I'm Robert Swift, and I arrived at Plymouth State College in September of 1979, and I was here until, or I retired officially on the 4th of January in 2014. Now, just uh, do you remember how many students were here in, when you arrived in, in 79? And um, well, for years I've kept a diary, and so I've, I've jotted a couple things down. I've done some research, and let me just share this with you. This was a diary entry on the 18th of June in 79. Good trip up from Memphis. I was at Memphis State University. The meetings went well. I was impressed with the faculty and the administration. They asked me good questions. How do I view the department chair? What type of leadership? What would be my goals? We ate at a charming New England restaurant over in Ashland, common man. And then on the 22nd of June, the diary says, the call came from Plymouth State today. I have been offered the position of chair of the music department at $21,000 and the rank of associate professor. I dickered. I said, can't you come up a little bit more? And they came up with $500 more and for the salary and also $575 for moving expenses. So I came with my family. Okay, okay. And do you remember how many students were in the, in the school as a whole and many? Not, many in the music not exactly. Class? However, um, one of my first assignments, I'm a choral conductor, and my first assignments at the opening convocation for all the incoming students, they asked me to lead the alma mater. And this is not a time that people cared about singing. So I put this. Tonight I taught about 850 incoming freshmen the alma mater. They had been entertained, in quotes, by harpsichord music and piano music and a talk by a former education chairman, Norton Bagley, I think it was. It was a raucous atmosphere but I quietly waited and they got quiet and we did it. And after that, I remember I had to find a new band conductor, a new jazz band conductor. Margo was brought on the faculty because the department at that time was going through rough times. And she was brought on as an accompanist. It, it all worked out, yeah. Right, right. So uh, 850 freshmen, do you remember how many you had in the music department? Oh gosh, not many majors. It may have been like 20, Two or 23. One of the challenges back then too was growing in the numbers, not only the numbers but the quality. Mm -hmm. So we all pulled together and the faculty was so fine pulling together and that's that's been true of that department all the way along. And, and sort of comparatively speaking, how many numbers of music majors did you have when you retired? Music and majors, oh gosh, I wasn't the chair for the last 12, 13 years so I all told the department I think at a I, you should check that, but over 100. Okay, so so pro probably from maybe 25, maybe yes, minimums it, up to about 100. It, so fourfold increase in... Quadrupled or something. Right. right. Now, yeah. when you came, Silver Hall was not Silver Hall, right? Well, I think Silver... It was, it, was, it, was, it was Silver Hall, but it was the gymnasium. It was also the gymnasium. Multiple use kind of facility. Yeah, we had to do that. Uh, so what do you think the impact of, a, of the new Silver Hall had in terms of the music program, the theater v program. Very positive. I mean, acoustically, the space is outstanding compared to what we used to have. Um, Old Silver Hall, you probably remember all this yourself, it was also the phys ed building. And I remember one section, there were lockers no longer used. And all the talk about the ghost of Silver Hall and hearing people or things walk around in the lockers there, that was, that was part of it too. So now you came from fairly large community and a fairly large school, because Memphis State, I assume. Memphis State back then, yeah. Probably was, what, 10,000 students? Or oh, maybe 8, yes, yes. Uh, to maybe what Plymouth maybe had, maybe also yeah, 2,500 or 3,000? Uh, probably, yeah, those numbers. I mean. yeah. what, what was your feeling of coming from such a big institution to such a small institution? Did you feel like you were now under a microscope? Yeah, oh, opportunities to grow. Um, Memphis State, I was director of music education, which is a fine title 
But the more I talked there, and I had some difficulties with the administration of the department, and I thought maybe it's time to return to New England. I've been very fond of the Adirondack Mountains my whole life, and here was a school that was due east of the Adirondacks, and so that was part of it. But I also wanted to try administrative work, and so here would be a place that I could continue teaching because the program was small enough that the, the chair also taught, but also I could work on developing some administrative skills. So that it worked out beautifully. Okay, and, and um, let's follow up a little bit on that. I mean, because not only were you chair of the music department, but it became music and theater as, as it right. went on. But you also served the college as uh, interim, dean interim dean of the and, faculty. And can you talk a little bit about that experience? Oh, that was wonderful. Um, I don't know exactly. How did you happen to get into the job anyway? I mean, what? what I don't know. I, the, the faculty had to had to have an election, I guess, had to choose, and so I was nominated. I, I mean, all I all I recall is that I was given the honor of doing that, and for 16 months, uh, it it was very positive. And um, how did you find the difference between being, you know, an interim dean and the chair of the music theater? Yeah, department? you you just have to widen your scope of responsibility and you have to look for opportunities to develop other areas as I had been doing in music. Uh, you had to be available to work with faculty. You had to learn how to deal with others that maybe would not agree with your, your views. Um, working with Mady Barrett, who was then the president pro tem or something, was a wonderful opportunity. She was so positive and supportive, so it was just um, very nice. That's not to say there were not challenges. There were some, but uh, it was good. Well, I, I seem to get a very different view of faculty and staff. Uh, you know, it's one thing being a music director and having a chorus and yes. working with students, but now you've got a different population that you're working with, and there's probably a different skill set that you yes. have to... Yes, and, and, and to try to support all of the other departments at that time. It's a challenge. Being an administrator, I don't know how they do it. I mean, you just have to be supportive of everyone, but you still have to make decisions that are quite um, difficult. It might be controversial at some time. That's right. And That's right. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about your experience with your students there and, and you know, music students. I assume you had, you were director of the choruses, so you right. worked directly with them. When I first arrived, I conducted the college chorale. Okay. Uh, Margot accompanied it. My wife, Margot, accompanied it. Um, and then the Pemmy Draws a Choral Society, which is a community chorus, also was looking for a conductor, so that worked out too. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I thought it was good for me to give up the college chorale to focus more on administrative things, so I did that. But wonderful experience and, and wonderful students, um, as you know. That well, it seems like the college has been pretty supportive of the Pemmy Choral Society in terms of providing oh, them the space. Yeah, the Choral Society was offered for college for college credit, and so that was good. Students could take it and get college credit. So it gives them a mixture of, of people from the town and, and, and some of the students from the That's college. right. So. And taking tours, and um, it, that also gave Plymouth State the opportunity to get some uh, national attention. PEMI, way back, was featured on the Voice of America, International Short oh, Wave, okay. and so that put Plymouth on me. That may be even gave other faculty a chance that well, maybe I should be considered to be the in interim dean. I don't know. I don't know, but okay. it was quite remarkable. We sang, well, the college department performed at the State House, um, various all-state performances. We took the whole department, the band, the choir, and we performed for all-state, just to get Plymouth. To get the name out. Yes, and get the recognition of the right, really right. fine quality that we were developing. Well, I, you know, just as a slight, slight comment, you know, it always amazed me that people didn't know that we had a science department at Plymouth State. Yes. You, know, you go to the state and, oh, you got, you got science in Plymouth. Yes, <laughs> exactly. As soon as with the music, you get a music department. Yes, <laughs> at Plymouth. Right. That's right. Okay. Uh, so what do you see, you, 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 as it says, you came around, you know, 1979, and then you stayed, you know, through the millennium. Yes. Uh, what kind of difference did you see in the students when you first came here as those that you had uh, just before you retired? I don't know that students... Were they always good? Or, uh, oh, always. And uh, Let's see. The potential is always there. 
And I don't know that students, society changes, technology changes, but the basic needs that we have as individuals continue. And I think the students, some are motivated more than others. Mm. But I think that students uh, always showed promise. Uh, if you would kind of believe in them and, and know what they are capable of doing, even though they may not agree with you at times, I, I know the students change that much. That's probably not the answer you want, but I, I think it's... Um, well, here, here's another question for you. Uh, you dealt with music students, and, you, and I know, knowing having dealt with bio majors, that they're always more into their major, and they work very hard for Yes. Them. But you've also taught music courses for the non-music oh. major. And what was your impression? Do you, did you see any difference from the kids that you had, let's say, in your intro to music way back when, when there was... You know, as compared to the intro to music, you know, when you sort of closed yes. the experiment. Yes, intro to music then became exploring music, and it was kind of the course that later, that later years, I was teaching an awful lot of that, and loving it. I mean, to have a chance to, to work with students from every area of the university or the college, uh, to see the potential they had, to help them realize it, if they wanted to have it realized, um, I, 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 it was just a wonderful opportunity. Now, here's another question that may be kind of contradictory, but or not contradictory, but complex. But <laughs> did you teach rap when you first came here, as compared to when you, uh, you know, towards the end of your career, did I, rap music get into your? Well, I honestly don't. I, I try to see in students um, their potential for what they're able to achieve if they want to. And, and my part of my assignment as a teacher's assignment is to to motivate, to get them to know to get them to realize what they're capable of doing. They don't limit themselves. And we all have to work at that. So I think, um, I, I really think basically the need is, is, is the same mm. as we go along. So one other, I mean, as, uh, you had a music department and then you started with the music and theater. And then dance came along too. Right, and what do you think of, what kind of major transformations took place because of that addition of, of theater and dance to the music department. Uh, how, what impact did that have on you as a, as a professional? And what impact did that have on the college? My training was as, as a music educator. So when we added uh, theater, drama, and then we added dance, that meant that I needed to be a little bit more uh, into those areas, which I was happy to do. We had terrific faculty, and so they also were all kind of working together, teaching each other, not mm -hmm. just students, but each other. Um, I, mean, I just, we all kind of grew together, or tried to. Right. Uh, so when you, and, and, I, and I talk, I've talked a bit with, with Marco about this, uh, when you arrived, uh, Plymouth was pretty much a very, very small town, and the college was not really a college in the sense of having its own campus. Uh, what are your impressions now of the town as compared to then? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I've jotted an answer for that. If you want to see how Plymouth is growing, go out to Hannaford's. I mean, just the traffic and the building. I mean, Plymouth grows. I, I, right, yeah. I'm glad to see it growing, I guess. Yeah. And the university is part of that, too. Uh, <coughs> when <coughs> When you came here, was it, you, you mentioned maybe Barrett. Uh, or are there any other people that you, you know, knew here on the faculty that you could say influenced you more so than, than yeah, others? Yes, so my, my greatest assistant, of course, is my wife, Margot, all the way along. Uh, also, my dad was a music educator and an administrator, and so he taught me some principles that I think have worked. If I had to choose from the early days, a Plymouth State person, I think Jim Hobart, James Hobart, mm -hmm. who was the financial principal administrator, but he also took an interest in Margot and me and the department. When I was um, in the dean's office, the department was able to purchase a brand new organ, uh, which was considerable expense back then, and mm -hmm. I think Jim Hobart helped to make that possible. Um, so he, he's been very, assist, very helpful. So those who have been influences on you, can you think of anybody that you've been influenced on other than your students in terms of faculty or? Can I think of students you mean? Or well, you've been influenced on students. Oh, but, yes. But do you think you've had much of an influence on other faculty through oh, that's a good your role as a chair or your role as that's a That's a good question. I, 
if I did, it was more by example than deliberately trying to um, steer. But I. Mm. You haven't any, let's say, taken any faculty under your wing, so to speak. To when the new faculty came through, I as sure wanted to support them, and so in, in that respect, yes. But I, I don't. Um, one thing about being department chair is that you, I felt you shouldn't get too close to any one particular. I mean, I think the chair is kind of an administrative position, and you don't want to show favorites because that can hurt the whole department. Others right, they're right, coming right. in. So. Uh, so we have to be equitable amongst all, all of them. So, uh, so you've been here for a while. What do you think some of your major contributions have been? You know, other than being chair and the dean, what other kind of contributions do you think that you've made for the campus? Yes, I. Well, uh, serving. I set that down here someplace. Um, department chair, and then I'm, I'm organist of the Christian Science Church. Uh, I was I served as president of the New Hampshire Music Educators Association, okay, which is an adjudicator in Canada, in the United States. Um, there are probably a couple others, but um, served on state committees to just a variety of things. And, and, and how do you think people see Plymouth now as, uh, as an institution supporting music when you first came as to what you see now? As I wonder. Um, I think the support is still there. I think the faculty is doing marvelous work in getting the word out. Uh, Dan Perkins takes his groups for tours. Uh, Jonathan Santori is a fine composer. Um, Rick Feniger does wonderful work for the jazz program and music technology. So I think they all are doing what they can to keep music in the forefront of people's thoughts and support. And of course, you have a much nicer facility today than what you had. Yes. At the hall. Yeah. Uh, what did you see? Uh, you've been here long enough. As a relationship between the music theater and dance department and the New Hampshire Music Festival? Good, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not, um, when I was first chair, they even asked me to conduct to the choir one summer. Uh, it, it's always been kind of positive. I now have kind of backed out of that, so I don't know today, but I, I well, Dan Perkins is working with the chorus, I know, right. I'm an assistant conductor, so um, I, it's still positive, I think. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, in terms of, of reputation of the music department and theater and dance, what have you, uh, I, w I would assume that you have a much better reputation today than you had when you came. Is that a question? You may just want Yeah, to I mean, do you think, uh, I mean, if you had been living in Manchester, would you, back in, you know, when you came, would you have known that Plymouth, you said Plymouth, maybe you didn't even have a music department. Um, well, I think the challenges continue. The Southern New Hampshire University is just getting lots of attention, TV ads and everything. I think we're, we're holding our own. I think there's always a need to be more aggressive in publicity, probably, and try to get the word out. Um, I taught for the College for Lifelong Learning, a school for lifelong learning, a Granite State College of the Church, right, right, right. Uh, for several years, and I thought that was good too. Some of the students I worked with there then came to Plymouth State, so Plymouth. recruitment is good too. Right, right. I mean, because that that seems to be something that uh, you know, uh, uh, the reputation of the music department is based upon the quality of the students that make the performances. Yes, and getting the word out. Right, and. Even to a certain extent in biology, when I produce a bio major, I want them to be a good right, student, right. you know. And if you get a lousy person that doesn't know much about music, oh. you know, can you transform them? Yeah. Uh, can you transform we, them? I mean, we've had some one, some students also who have done wonderfully well. Um, the tenor who sings for the hockey team for all of the Stanley Cup, oh, okay. Todd Angeli, is, is a Plymouth State yeah, University Kathleen. student and. Kathleen Arecki has passed on now, but she would be so proud. Right. I mean, it just, I wrote down a little note. I just said, Do, keep doing the good work. Well, I, I, I think I may remember for the New Hampshire Music Fest that we knew some of the college students. And, uh, they, I, over the years, I think they have, yeah. Right. They usually bring in people, professionals from all right, over, right. but there have been some of ours. Because I know you've had a couple of majors that have gone on to Italy and studied in Italy. Yes, and, uh, yeah, 
over the years. Right. You know. And I know with our meteorology program, we've had a number of meteorologists that have gone on to, I think maybe in Boston, Boston oh, and to Chicago. Meteorology is another very strong offering, right? right. So, uh, so what do you feel your major contributions have been then during your time here in Plymouth? Uh, what have they been? Yeah, well, I, I you, think had a, you mentioned all the edu you know, education and things like that. But yeah, I, what about other contributions that you think you made to the college? And um, I don't know. Try it, you try to serve as an example for students, for colleagues, for for everybody. I mean, just you hope your positive example is seen and respected and valued. I guess that's I, I just answer it that way. And, and you know, talking with Margot, we, she mentioned her bell ringing at the James Cleveland Robert Frost Award. Do you have any kind of one story like that that you want to? Tell that, uh, I had a couple from my diary. As I say, I've kept a diary, and so here are two little excerpts. From September the 6th, 1991, for the first time in 13 years, the President's banquet this evening was canceled. This has been a bleak day for PSC. The death of Tess Reed in the registrar's office. She was found in her apartment this morning. There was foul play and murder is now expected. I had gone for a haircut, found too many people there, and so at 8.30 drove up to church to practice organ and noticed the many police cars and Henry Bird, chief of security, around an apartment house on Highland Street right up from the church. She was always so helpful and friendly and positive. Hello, Bob, how can I help you? It was often the way she'd answer the telephone. Now to determine who was responsible. The PAs called a meeting at 3.30 to inform us of developments, which then they couldn't do, as everything was been kept secret. Nonetheless, we gathered and together shared shock and sadness. Mm -hmm. So there was that one. And that was such a sad thing. It's oh my goodness. Been solved, uh, you know, oh, it many, many, many years later, a guy in Massachusetts. Finally, Massachusetts. finally. And then the last one, my last day of teaching. Uh, this was December 12th, 2013, a Thursday. I wrote this at 8.07 p.m. <laughs> I made it through all the classes until the six o'clock. And there I made it through, information please, a little story I tell, and the Scottish pastor story of my dad's, until I wanted to say, and I very much enjoyed and I had trouble going on. And then a tear fell from my right eye, and then the class broke into applause, led by Debbie Gibson, I think. She's a music teacher in Laconia who took my class that oh, okay. summer. Okay. And the wonderful students around her. I played James Taylor's You've Got a Friend, and I sat back at the side, as I always have done with extended listenings. I gradually regained composure, but needed my handkerchief to do so. Afterwards, they did the course evaluation while I waited out in the hall. Several shook my hand, many said thank you, and three or four gave me a big, strong hug. If I have the time, I'll go through the old diaries to see what that first day of teaching was like in West Winfield, New York, 52 years ago this fall. What a wonderful journey, and challenging too. My gratitude to the Heavenly Father is inexpressible. Yeah, and see, it's, I have learned that I have never quit. Yeah. Have you ever kept a diary yourself or a journal or? No, I, I sometimes keep a journal of what I read. Yeah, it, it's they're I wonderful, read. and right. and sometimes I want to go back and see, like Margot, we were searching for when the handbells played there. Right, right. Gosh, it's just kind of hard. I mean, so many pages well, out. Well, you know, occasionally Eleanor has, has kept a. Oh yeah. On a diary. Oh, it's lovely. And it's, 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 what performances we might have seen and where we were. And, I always think, well, someday I'll sit down and I'll go sort of year by year. But yes. I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, just one last question. Is there anything from the past? And we keep saying that if you don't recognize the past, you don't, you know, do well in the future. Is there anything from the past that you think should be applied to the, the future from the state as, as an institution? Is there something that we did in the past that maybe we're not doing now and we should be doing? I really have had, I don't know if you want to hear this kind of stuff, you can always erase it. I've had trouble with this cluster idea. I hope, bah, I mean, in music, in, we already had music and theater and dance together, and so to divide those into further clusters, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a problem with that, and I don't really understand it. 
um, the things that have worked in the past, I think the individual support and attention from the administration to the faculty, um, for me, that's what made it so good. Memphis State was so big and so kind of impersonal mm -hmm. and a lot of competitiveness. Right, right. And any place is going to have that, I realize, but darn it, you have to pull it together. And so I think they just have to keep valuing everybody, the individual, the students, the fact, et cetera. And you mentioned the fact that giving attention to students, you can see their growth over the, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've got so many students I could tell you about, but um, yeah, just let them know they, they matter and, and they have such a potential and just believe the best and so forth. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, by the way, for this whole project. It's, it's wonderful you're taking the time to do it. So.